Okay, here we are with chapter four. We're going to start off uh, a little bit differently with this uh, set of lecture videos um, because the slides get right into doing problems without giving you much background on how to do those problems. So what I want you to do with this particular video is to get out some pen and paper and to take notes as if you were sitting in a classroom listening to me lecture in the classroom, okay? So um, chapter four, we're gonna start talking about light. And this is one of my favorite topics in all of chemistry um, because it really tickles my nerdy side. And uh, we'll get into it. So light is also referred to as electromagnetic radiation, okay? And the other thing that's really cool about light is that it travels at constant speed. Okay, so in a particular medium, say air or water or the vacuum of space, light will always travel at the same speed within that medium, okay? And for the purposes of our um, what we're doing, we're gonna talk about light traveling in a vacuum, so like in outer space, okay? And we use um, a symbol for the speed of light, which is lowercase c, right? And the speed of light, and this, this is where, like I said, my nerd side gets excited because talking about the speed of light, c equals 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. That's how fast light travels, okay? And if, if you want like a perspective, you think about how far the Earth is from the sun, it takes about six minutes for light to travel from the sun to the earth. So this is why we talk about light years as um, we use those as distance measurements because we know how fast light travels and it's easier for us to talk about the distance light travels in a year rather than try to talk about miles or kilometers. So anyways, back to the, the subject at hand. So C is the speed of light. Okay, and light, the increments of light, okay, or we can talk about like the pieces of light. So what are the, the bits that are traveling? We talk about um, the increments of light are called photons. Okay, and the word photon is often thrown around in science fiction, you know, Star Trek and its photon torpedoes and things like that. But in real life, we are talking about a unit of light. Or a piece of light, okay? So light moves like a wave. moves like a wave traveling through space, any space. Okay, so I can talk about waves in certain ways. So if I draw a wave here, eh, that's not a very good wave. There we go. I can be specific about how long the distance is between two peaks of the wave, and we call that a wavelength. Okay, so from the top of one wave to the top of the next wave is one wavelength, right? And that's a distance. So we can talk about that in meters or nanometers or kilometers, any kind of distance, okay? to describe the length of one wave. And the other important thing is how many waves pass in one second is called frequency. Okay, how frequently a wave passes or the frequency of a wave. And so 
how many waves pass within one second is called the frequency. So I say one wave per second. The other ways that I can write that is simply, I leave out the word wave, and I say one inverse second. So seconds to the minus one power is the same thing as saying one over seconds. Okay, so if you see this, seconds to the minus one, we're probably gonna use that quite a bit coming up. That means that it's seconds are on the bottom of a fraction, okay? We also call that, so inverse seconds are called hertz, so one HZ. Okay, so the units of frequency are inverse seconds or hertz. Those mean the same thing. So now we have symbols for wavelength and frequency. Right, so our symbol for wavelength is the Greek symbol that looks like this, and it's called lambda. Lambda. Okay, and our symbol for frequency looks like a special V, and that's called nu, N-U. Okay, and these are Greek symbols. Okay, and we already know the symbol for light, or light speed, is just C. Okay? So let's talk about how frequency and um, wavelength sort of go together. All right, before we move on and try to do anything more, I want to sort of do an example of how we can talk about wavelength and frequency. So if the distance um, between these two bars is one second, okay, then if I have a wavelength that looks like this, and those really should be the same size, versus if I have another one this is also one second my wavelength looks like this okay you can see how a longer wavelength so a long lambda you get fewer wavelengths per second. So a long wavelength, um, small frequency. Right? But if I have a short wavelength, I get more waves in the same amount of time. So I get high frequency. Okay, so we're talking about how many waves pass in a second, and that is related to how long the wavelength is, because everything travels at the same speed. So if I crimp it up, it's all traveling at the same speed, so I get more hits per second. If I stretch it out, then I get fewer hits per second. So long wavelength means small frequency, short wavelength means high frequency. So we have an equation, all right? We already talked about a number for the speed of light. We talked about that's uh, in meters per second. So our equation looks like this. So the speed of light equals lambda times nu. All right, so the speed of light is constant. And it's always three times 10 to the eight meters per second. And here's our wavelength. Okay, and it will be in units of meters. And then here's our frequency. 
and it will be in units of seconds to the minus one, or we can think about that as one over seconds. Okay, so thinking about what I drew up here with these two different wavelengths, if my frequency is long, excuse me, if my wavelength is long, my frequency is small. If my wavelength is small, my frequency is high. Okay, so they're inversely proportional, and that's kind of an important thing. So lambda wavelength and nu frequency are inversely proportional. Okay, and to put that in sort of plain, plain uh, language, when one goes up, the other goes down. Okay, if wavelength is big, frequency is small. If wavelength is small, frequency is big. They're opposite. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and stop this video right here. We're going to pick up um, with a second video like this, um, where we're going to finish talking about some more with frequency and wavelength, and, and then we'll do some practice problems. And then, probably on our third video, we'll actually start talking about slides. So I encourage you, please do not skip these videos because they're very, very helpful to you to do these problems.